Good evening, everybody. This is my little um, cultural political talk for the evening. I'm going to talk about something um, terrible, ter something very large, very destructive. <laughs> I sound like Trump. That is happening um, to Western political thinking, our, our popular um, train of thoughts regarding social politics. And I'll just sim simply say it this way. Being a racist, or rather a racist person, um, anti-Semite, um, a homophobe, these don't exist as people. These things do not create a group of people. There are no anti-Semites. When we say anti-Semitic people, we are saying people who are behaving that way. However, as we can see, following the news for many, many years now, we have been passing laws that act upon people as a category. Though we word it as um, laws to, for people to not be racist, for example, in the place of employment, our society and our cultures have come to regard it as a type of person. And so when you're having an argument about homosexuality, for example, people will say he's a homophobe. Or if you say something about Israel, people will say he's, he's anti-Semitic. And it conjures the idea, the notion of a category of person. What we have done is we have categorized and separated society empowering us to be judgmental, moralistic, and condemning of people. Now, this has been um, written about in books that I have not read, but I have heard people talk about how government is teaching people to separate ourselves in, in um, calling each other by races like black or, or, um, or gay to, and so forth in order to dominate and control the population. I don't believe this. I don't believe that it is intentional. I think humanity, we have limited intelligence and we have a lot of precocious, uh, a lot of prowess with our logical intelligence that invents and creates and designs the world that we introduce ourselves into operating and, and we end up hurting ourselves with the world we invent and we design with wars and thoughts, things that are thought wrongly and end up being institutional philosophies or principles. It's really just us being clumsy with how we use our own intelligence. The situation that we're in, though, is that when you listen to, for example, our president, he's um, just made an example of a, a, a person that is addressing a human uh, issue. And this is happening in the United Nations. People... Um, and he, you know, and, and, and bluntly has categorized that, that person as an anti-Semite, and thus they, they, she should resign or whatever. And we are, and then Netanyahu at the United Nations, and people um, fire you for for being a homophobe, and and this is it's immense. The repercussions of this error has our society bogged bog lodged in the mud with our um, ability to reason things for what they really are. We are stuck in thinking that we have to be defensive and look out for uh, those who are those people, racists, homophobes, anti-Semites. And um, it's almost like we're uh, commonly said barking at the wrong tree we are sort of working in the wrong area of the room we are all stuck in that corner uh, thinking that the problem is people that we have to find these people who are anti-semitic or are racist or are homophobic in reality these things are expressions of of our uh, angered intelligence we understand either something very deep 
physiologic on our mind that we're uncomfortable with and we don't buy the the social civil um, discourse of, of, of gay marriage and adopting kids uh, as a gay couple and and living your whole life homosexually as if it's the same and identical thing to living uh, regular sexuality. So we don't buy these things, but we charge it perhaps. And then you, of course, as human beings, we must identify the person. Who are you talking about, right? And so the intention of calling pe people who are against homosexuality or people who are against um, Israel or the Jews or what have you is really uh, purposefully used to address an issue, a social, political, civil issue. It's mechanics, it's dynamics, how it's working, what, what it's doing, why uh, the problems arose and what the reasons for those problems are. That is the intention governing and driving the inangered uh, common statements and discourses that people make. We're talking about people and our society and how we're treating one another. But of course, when we talk about people, we must uh, we can't always know people's names. <laughs> if we knew everybody's names, this problem wouldn't exist because we're, we would be talking about that person's behavior and then in, re in, in, re in reference to how that society is handling that situation. And so we would be more clearly be able to see that we're talking about the dynamics in a situation, in a socially engaging situation. Um, this, I mean... I, I reckon I, I explained it fairly well. However, I don't think what, what I, I what I am worried that I I won't be able to get across is how much damage, how stuck, and how massively we are getting bunched up against the the fence, sort of say, like a fish, like a school of fish trapped in a in a big net because we're stuck in this idea. And it has been going on for a long time. Uh, for a long time, we, we, we don't see it, and so we, we, uh, we create an abundant amount of errors. We, um, we want to cure racism from society, so we, we write in stuff that recategorizes people in order to not categorize ourselves. In other words, what we need to teach is to not is etiquette of good manners and good treatment of each other, ways in which to talk to each other, because we need to remember that we offend people if, I'll make the example of black, which is easy, <laughs> I'm wearing black. Um, when, when I came to the States, oh no, this is going to turn out to be something long again. When I came back to the States from having spent my childhood in Argentina, when I returned to the States, uh, and a little bit older, um, one of the things I noticed about the States was that people were really caught up with this thing of categorizing blacks and whites. You know, it was something that didn't exist in Argentina, in my experience as a child there. Of course, at the dinner table, you heard adults say, "Black, this black person or that Jewish person, but it didn't... It, um, in as so far as the use of language, it was uh, pseudonyms like blackie, you know, and meant as um, a reference of a human reference of relating to that person, of um, of calling them by what their friends and family know them by. Uh, and then, of course, there are instances where you could all, you would also hear that damn whatever that damn Jew, for example, or that damn black person, but. The difference was that the feeling, when if you were listening to that as a child, you thought, wow, how mean. He doesn't have to resort to um, loading the comment with his race in order to express that he's angry at that person. Because you understood that we're not categories. That um, So the problem is now, when I came to the States, immediately I saw that we were walking on eggshells, that if you said that damn black person, it really sounded like that person was damned because he was black, not because the person was angry, said damn about a black person, but because he's black, he was damned. See, that difference in the two cultures was, was very obvious to me 
as a child, and I'm sure a lot of people who travel between different countries feel this, and they don't know how to explain it, and wouldn't you know, it's super important. It's super important because by deforming that, we have made an enemy of other people because of how they look, what they think, that doesn't exist for something that they think that categorizes them that they're not uh, categorized as such by that comment that comment is being used if somebody says something about uh, somebody who uh, lives homosexually uh, maybe they're their friend but when they get angry they said you fag right you damn fag you know when they were having a fight a smart and wise culture that wise in their humanity is not affected by that because they know that the person got angry and, and said that but they don't mean it because they know that they they still see that person as a human being and they would do not categorize or separate or lessen that person because in the moment of anger they resorted to calling him a fag, a black a nigger or a a Jew or what have you. Um, there we are sort of like it's an immunity that comes that we come before that comes before that later gets lost and instead of immunities which <laughs> develop later. It's like something that we a problem that we don't have that later becomes a problem because we have tried to make people say and not say things. This is the root of the problem, wanting to dominate and control people's behavior too much other countries and so let's not get into that let's just try to heal society now just to add a note of sophistication to this why do we fall into it because it could happen to any society it could start happening to societies in the in southeastern asia that maybe don't talk normally and uh, they have this sort of prejudice but it doesn't become uh, it hasn't affected to where they're categorizing and seeking to judge and condemn each other because they they have these prejudices that come out in a moment of anger. It hasn't come over to the side that we're at now, that it seems that people can empower themselves. I mean, I have people that wanted to get me suspended from Facebook, for example, because I used the word gay or fag or something to explain something uh, in a conversation and you know and Facebook is a trap in many ways because you feel you know people they're your friends and you start using language um, like you would on the street to make examples to make side examples to illustrate what you're saying or maybe just because you feel you can joke around with somebody and you know people have used that and then started disseminating and saying that he's a homophobe and then all of a sudden everybody in the group is saying oh that person is a homophobe a, ra a racist a pedophile and all these tons of of disparaging um ostracization uh get put on people we're just hurt we're suffering we're hurting ourselves this is crazy but um aside from sounding the alarm on on this big mistake that we're socially making with our language and the way we treat each other we need to understand why we react why we can be touchy and why it can become worse what why it can go to the other side when there is love and friendship and trust and everything is good and it's a sunny day and you run into your neighbors you probably know the guy friends have said uh you go first. Come on, you jump. No, I'm. I don't want to go. I'm scared. Oh, come on, you fag. Right. Um, at that moment, fag doesn't sound like he's being called a homosexual, though he is calling him gay. Um, now, if they're fighting in a real, like, heated, um, a more serious, mature discussion and the same thing happens between two friends um, it gets closer let's say to a line where the guy being called a fag says did you mean that did you are why did you say that to me it, because there's now there's more anger there's more seriousness 
there's more at stake. When it's about strangers, and the, let's say the, the, the circumstances are always the same, but when it's about strangers and the person gets angry at a stranger, the uh, charge of using the same slur, calling somebody a, a fag, is no longer, cannot even be seen as, um, you know, gordo, like calling a suit, something that is benevolent, it just happens to be a description of something. It, it, it really seems like that person is being, feels, that person feels like they're being called a worthless homosexual because it's a stranger. And that, this happens because to relate to each other, the most important thing that human beings feel is uh, identification of one another. In other words, when we don't know each other, we're walking in a desert alone for months, and all of a sudden we see another human being, we become elated. Because what, what is most important to our existence is the existence of another. The collective comes first. We're first a, a collective organism, a community, a, a super community, a species, a super community species. It's really what ultimately is the, the target of the, 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 the leading head or the, hand, the steering wheel of the evolution of humanity is sitting on the collective and all discourses of sociology and philosophy and everything could be rewired to, to, uh, to change these hierarchies because really what matters to each one of us the most is that we're integrated, accepted, loved, that we love, that we recognize and that we accept others as well. Um, and so, therefore, right next to seeing, oh, thank goodness there's another human being in this desert, is knowing more about that person. You know, it's tall, uh, fat, quiet, their name. We want to know their name. First thing is, you know, that's the first thing we do. What is your name, right? Okay, so identifying is uh, the other, is very deep in our primitive psyche, or however, whatever the scientific term for this, in our cognizant um, awareness of the, of the species, of each other identifying who, who that person is. We, I can see, you know, I want to confirm it's a human being. We're not even sure until we really take a good look, right? And we run into that person in the desert and we make sure it's most likely because no, nothing else walks upright like we do. But immediately after that, we want to know, we want to make sure it's that important. It's so intensely important that we identify and identification is, it takes a form of name. And so when we charge anger, because what we don't want is anger, what we want is acceptance, inclusion, belonging, accepting and trusting the other as well as being trusted and being accepted. Um, the negation of that, you don't belong, I don't want you, is like getting all of a sudden stop the world, like I hurt nothing matters but healing this wound. So when we charge anger to the noun of identifying and calling somebody, it may, it's like a, a missile that hits our cognizant subconscious. Because it was charged with anger, that's why what is most more important is that we learn to treat each other well, with respect, with not, with, um, not slap people around and vent our anger at them, but to have uh, tact and sensibility and consideration and to listen and da, 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 and all the things that we, our grandparents, grandparents have been trying to teach their kids, uh, which this society is just, uh, you know, fit, full speed ahead, let me, blah, 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 let me have more, have more, everybody's just discardable, you know, uh, and so we are losing that refinement. Um, but losing this refinement is precisely what is making it easier for us to not be as strong uh, when those instances in which, where somebody calls, uh, says something they don't like about you, you fatso, uh, charged with anger, uh, which creates trauma because of what I just explained. When we are a society that overall are in our natural state, which is a certain amount of these things happen. But most of the time, what is m these things are reasoned 
and understood as just being called a descriptive a description black or chubby or um, you know sneezy <laughs> what have you um, I don't want to I don't want anti-semitic being it's it's just the it's such that much further that's that's how bad we've gotten um, in we have forced turning something that otherwise in a healthier society would have never been pinned as a categorizing of people um, adjective an anti-semite we have gone we have left behind so far back the health of a society that is strong enough to not be daunted by the instances of anger and and always stay with uh, being confident and comfortable with our friendly amicable name descriptions of each other um, you know if you if you go if you travel you go to some countries and you see how especially in the races you know they call it Indian or or black or or whatever these these words that are even cute sounding if you speak their language um, they don't feel that it's separating and if somebody says it one too many times that it starts going to that deep cognizant part of the mind where it's wait a second he keeps calling me that my name is my name it's not what I look like it's all fun and games it's fine when we're playing around but I got tired of it saying it so many times and you just tell that person that and everybody's still confident about it and the whole of the society does not get um, sort of brought down by this weight of being careful of walking on eggshells on how we speak and what we call each other and how we treat each other by the category and the noun we have just lot we have gone nuts we have made it impossible to relate to one another because we don't allow ourselves to be spontaneous and so anyways the, 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 in, in conclusion um, anti-semitic doesn't exist it doesn't exist as a person <laughs> you can't be an anti-semitic you can't be a homophobe. By the way, homophobia is something that does exist in the mind. It's, it, it's, it's very it's ancient. It's one of the ways the brain deals with, uh, with uh, the fused simultaneity of two things happening at once in the, the homosexual area of the human brain. And there's a, a part that also lights up and says, wait a second, I was really drawn to that, but I'm not so sure. That is natural and it's in everybody, and that is called homophobia. It's a, a reaction, a natural reaction in the brain. Uh, we have made that in, in like, uh, anyways. All these things don't exist as people. They don't exist. There, there, is, there are no anti-Semites, Mr. Netanyahu. There are, we have to stop going after people and seeing, you know, and being the, the victim always of like, everybody hates us and we, you know, I gotta, I gotta be, you know, I'm I'm being facetious because behind that I think people don't feel victimized in actuality. I think what people do is very deeply subconscious. They have an intuitive awareness of this I'm describing and they use they use the accusation to empower themselves over you. They say they know that homosexuality is complicated and da 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 but when they called you a homophobe, then they okay, I got him. Now I got him. Now he doesn't have to tell me what I don't want to hear anymore. Now, now he's bad, and I got everybody to thinking that he's a bad person because we have instructed ourselves that these categories are to not, not be them. We should not be homo a homophobe, an anti-Semite, a racist person. You know, all these things. We're all walking like like vertical little. Uh, and some people with power and abundance of comfort and money and, and authority and a big uh, society all around them that wield uh, power and communications actually use, it could be a, a small scale, it could be a, a, a little loner behind his computer in that moment in YouTube or Facebook, he's powerful. We use these terms to... Um, sort of in a, a passive aggressive way, in a twisted way, attack other people and, and put and make them feel bad. And 
they don't naturally would feel bad if, if you understand what I've explained so far because they don't really feel that they're doing anything intended meanly uh, to you know people say for example you homophobe he's a homophobe but they don't really mean to ostracize that person they're actually describing somebody who has a hard time dealing with you know he tends to be angry or mean towards people who are gay but w I, that person didn't really mean to um, so uh, to 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 have that person um, segregated and, and, and attacked and conspired against um, and the person that is attacked the person that is called a homophobe or, or a, a Jew also knows that he can't possibly be separated from the human race but we have armed all of us with this we have armed ourselves I don't believe it's a conspiracy I don't think this was done intentionally like some people say say it has I think that we have to simply run too much uh, with the wrong streams of thought with our overly precautious prowess of intelligent logic telling people you know and the, also the the form of our social society of our social personality of our cultural personality might have a lot to do with it you know uh, if we always want to dominate and control others because of something everything comes from the past everything comes from there's a reason for why a society has developed a certain personality because of how they were historically in the past and so it could be that our cultural social personality uh, is more conducive to aggravating uh, the errors of our logical intelligence when we come up with our brilliant deductions and say uh, think that we're being smart about society and telling people what they should instead of stopping to th listen to what others say and that way the whole of the collective the whole society kind of evens out and, and slows down a little bit and, and that doesn't conclude and write it in stone right away we may be a society that kind of uh, bulldozes our, our dominion and, and want to control of the situation and controlling uh, and the desire to control the situation and this has resulted in in, in, um, in errors going further and more um, seizing of of people's lives in, in, in society but I don't know this anyways so that's it I made it too long I was but you know I um, you know we just gotta stop we gotta stop calling telling we gotta stop the, the vicious okay the the vicious ones should stop which are the ones that are using the accusation of anti-Semite in order to, to you know, dominate people's um, people's right to engage you. In other words, when you accuse somebody of being an anti-Semite, what you're doing is you're shutting them up so that they can have and and uh, they can continue to express their intelligence and their reasoning uh, in any way that would use that word Jew or Israel uh, in in a sentence so it's almost like pushing blowing really hard and push, pushing everybody away from you so you, and then these people are not like victims <laughs> they are they are um, calling uh, they are uh, complaining and and crying victimization but they're not victims because they, they, they we use these things these terms like homophobe and racist and anti-Semite to, to try to have our way continue um, you know going forward with the way we want the world to be and others to not engage us anymore in that area at all now um, unfortunately people have not realized this before because they could have worked in other ways there are ways and ways of saying things and you know not everybody but I mean what do we have to do everybody has to be a teacher and be, wait stop the conversation let me explain to you how how I mean that no we also have to each one of us not only has got to be good at delivering what we understand maybe we understand something better than the other person we want to explain which is what everybody wants to do is 
explain what they feel they know better than others or the ones they're talking to. But we also are responsible for um, believing that the other person knows what they want to say, that they mean well, that there's something good, contain, you know, there's that other half that the society and people have always been weak at, which is, let me find out, which is not having enough of that, let me find out what that person is bringing to the table, what they're actually trying to say, or, or, or uh, not judging and condemning them, but saying, oh, look, looks like, I." He's trying to say something good, but he said it the wrong way. Let me help him say it the right way. Slow down. I'm listening. Uh, you know, maybe you try to. You're trying to talk about this. Is that what you're trying to explain to me? You know, I appreciate that because I don't. You're for, you're right. I never heard that kind of perspective before. This this other half of a demeanor is what's missing, in in a lot of. We need a lot more of, in in for things to be better. Okay, that's it. There are no anti-Semites, okay, uh, sir. There aren't any. We're hur we're hurting people. We're offending people actually because, like I said, it doesn't exist. That means that people don't mean it. So when we call somebody an anti-Semite or a homophobe or a racist, we're actually insulting and offending them because deep inside they're just struggling with what our society is not educating us well enough. We're struggling with what our society has lost wisdom about in the ways we treat each other and articulate our understanding, our intelligent understanding of complexities. We're losing the instruments, the tools of language to explain the things that we get, we sort of perceive, we intuitively understand, or we do, but we, we don't have the words anymore because we're becoming dumber. The more... People say that capitalism makes us dumb, and you know, or that you know, this is another thing that um, has been talked about like last for a couple of decades already. That governments want to see us stupid, so they can dominate us. No, we're doing this to ourselves. Numbers, systems, and running by things that we have to obey. Obviously, put to sleep the brain. So if we, if everything has to do with a system and not engaging, not being craftsmen, not discovering, not teaching to our, to our son, to our neighbor, to our friend, what we know, passing the word, living together. Instead, we're all just on, on uh, what do you call it, on lanes, like, like greyhounds, you know, living life. Um, and I, I keep saying numbers and money, and all, it's all about fulfilling schedule. We are going to lose the very source we're going to start depleting and the very source that backs up and produces our logical reasoning intelligence because the most important thing is the most important thing for intelligence to stand on our scientific rational logical intelligence to stand on is the health of our uh treating one another our health of of of, of uh, our social how can i say this our social communi communicativity, our social communicativity, our our, uh, our our ability to know know one another and know what life is about and hu and the other and our fellow human being is about in the context in the context of everyday living, living as a collective. That means engaging one another, knowing uh, about human behavior as will not come to us thanks to the books, thanks to who taught us, it will come to us through what people teach and, and write in sciences or sociology or sexology or psychology, but thanks to the fact that we're still good and wise and intuitive and abundant in what we understand about human living and collective in society. So if we become more administrated more mechanical, more numbers orientated, more invention orientated, we have we we think less. And if you don't exercise the muscle of this part of the intelligent uh, intelligence in the human mind, it will start becoming flaccid. And um, and the other reason, oh Jesus, I forgot. 
And yeah, and and the other reason that we're um, that people have been believing that we are intentionally being made, we are becoming dumber. We are becoming dumber as a society. You can't talk about anything anymore. You go back 30, 40 years, especially in countries outside the States, I'm sorry to say it, I'm sorry, but in many other smaller, more teeming with, uh, with communication and social daily activities, and school was next door, and the parent went to the same school, and they, 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 they talked about what the teacher taught when they were a kid, and now there's this new teacher that teaches that same subject in that same school, you know, the life, the, the teeming life of, of, a, of a society, of a small, a traditional, um, not so administrated country is rich in its, um, in this kind of intelligence. The more we're, we're making more countries like us, we're making more countries. Now, there is what I explained, uh, <laughs> what I explained before, and then Another problem is when we start teaching intelligent constructs of notions, of values, social civil values, and in, in, in sentences and in, in f formatted ideas, and um, and we start building on those without the the base that gives us the natural wisdom on which to stand on, which verifies if that is true by no knowledge other than by having experienced a, a, a social a rich social collective life when you don't have that you start believing everything you hear or, or read or people tell you you can't you don't have the human being to say wait that's no good no i don't i don't care if whoever wrote it i i can tell that's not what life is about thinks that the healthy human mind but when we that aspect as a natural base starts becoming depleted uh, we start, we all need to be guided by others. We, we have a, a main drive. Our sail is the strongest thing in the world, you know, each one of us, and that's how the whole collective goes forward. But as far as education and what we know and what we speak, the language did not originate ever in all of evolution on one single person. It is not one person that said, I'm going to invent this word and I will give this, this is going to be a lamp and everybody will, will have to believe or will understand what I taught them and they will all learn that, that that is called a lamp. No, that's not how language arises. Language arises collectively. Education, therefore, collectively because we have an ear and a mouth Right, and so when you emit the voice, the voice is emitted for another human being's ear to hear, not for your own ear to hear, <laughs> like is happening to me right now, <laughs> but for another human being's ear to hear. So that means that the production, the very evolution of language and how it, it shaped everything, perhaps are even, uh, I've never taken it this far before. Um, but yeah, the, the form, the physiological form of our ears and our mouth all has to do with this sound that is being held between the ear and the mouth of the species. And apparently all species are doing the same thing. Um, and that means that the words themselves don't really acquire validity of definition until the other person says, okay, that does look like a lamp to me too maybe they believed you but the point is not convincing people to learn what you're saying the point is that it only be takes life takes on life when another person confirms and agrees that that will be called a lamp and that there, that's where language and grammar and everything starts arising from the speaking of people not from the idea of a singular person that means that we all are um, wired or, or, or made to uh, learn about ourselves and the world and existence through language through other people no, nobody's less because somebody's learning from me and I'm learning from somebody else it's uh, it's like those that kids game where everybody has their 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 hand on the shoulder of their friend and so nobody is 
does not not have a sh hand on a shoulder or something like that. So um, that means that if we're spewing a lot of untrue things, they will be believed. <laughs> they will be believed by somebody else. And they're not really right. They're incorrect. Guess what? This can happen to anybody. Presidents, governors, congress people, citizens, teachers. Teachers are the ones that work at it the most. And so they're really always, am I teaching? Am I teaching? Is it true? Is it true? And so the, the, you would say, you know, it's got to start there and let's God hope that it ne that never runs amok anywhere. But um, the problem, in, so far as society, they will always, re they're not the source, they're learning from what there is being taught to them also. So, But that situ that condition of learning from what is being, what is taught by others is um, weakened the most where people are less in touch with the humanity of others. So that's why it seems sometimes that certain administrations, the uh, the rules of a of an institution or the people in government, you know, they sometimes you go. It, it's doesn't it seem like they're less intelligent? The things that they're we're talking about all this cool stuff, and we're breaking ground and, and really seeing what it's about. And here at the dinner table or at the meeting, you know, where all the people who live that kind of situation know what all the problems with the country are, and we all seem to understand what, why the government is making mistakes. Uh, this it doesn't. It's not separated. It it, it happens in degrees, as uh, the more we are far from the living, the, what matters to us living collectively as a, as a human species and, and involving all that life is and has to live by and do. So the more of the world that we live with every day to day in collective, you will have the strong, healthiest environment where people will know why things are the way they are, should be, or need to be the way they are. As you start simply obeying, it pretty much has held in smaller countries because they're almost the same people. They were. Uh, that's kind of one thing I liked about Trump that it seemed that he came. He just walked off out of Park Avenue. I could talk to him and could say, "Hey, hey, you know, why don't you do this?" Uh, but now it's getting crazy. Um, it's, he's, he's kind of taking off, anyways. But um, um. So this is another thing that weakens the um, the uh, on target uh, correct knowledge of what is true to human the human form socially collectively, and this is why we're we this is why we end, we're now listening to our children. We're not doing it collectively. People have finally seen it and are starting to uh, sound the alarm and. Um, you know, but we, when they saw this is when people reacted finally. Eventually we do react, but in the meantime, we may lose a country, you know. Um, they started, uh, they were, the kids that would, at age seven, they would go to their um, mom and say, Mom, I think I feel like a boy. And mom would say, don't worry, honey, you know, we've got a transgender operation for you. And, you know somebody said wait a second there's something wrong about that how can a child know for sure when the subject of homosexuality is still being is still not conclusive we, we're trying obviously trying too hard because we can't quite put our finger on it and and now we're going to listen to a child and we're supposed to raise a child but they're going to tell us what because somehow they know they were born when that is a theory you know somebody people started seeing that and they went you know and started speaking up um, is this is just one of the many things that are occurring in our society uh, regarding our social collective intelligence. We're just concluding a lot of stuff that they, people don't care anymore. To me, it sounds good. To me, it sounds like it's just love, and you know. But um, I guess it doesn't matter if people are in Hawaii, and you know they're just going to live happy anyways, whatever. I mean, they will. They want to live happy, and that's all that matters. And so, 
it doesn't matter because the main thing is that they live happy while they're living. <laughs> but um, when you're talking about people who make decisions in our insti educational institution in, in the state, you know, uh, things that have to do with how the police treat people, uh, how uh, how people are treated, uh, how the judicial system and the penitentiary system is understood in 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 in, uh, in relation to people's freedom and the and the capacity of human beings to see they were wrong and uh, the belief the knowledge that socially we have uh, the the knowledge that socially would is part of our natural brain that is to know that somebody can actually do something wrong harm somebody and then feel bad about it and naturally change and heal from that ill um, so self-afflictive because if you hurt somebody else in society in the brain there's that if you un un understood the psychology of the, the whatever's happening psychologically um, uh, in that, that person's brain there is something that it has to do with coming back and hurting themselves um, we don't see it. Uh, th this is for intel intellectual scientists. Not every criminal bites their fingernails. Um, but um, the notion that somebody can see they were wrong and change and not longer. We do have it when it comes to, for example, our parents and our kids had a, a bad habit of stealing out of his mom's purse. And as parents, we, like I said, we come from the natural base endowed with something that knows you have got to have patience. They, they learn. We learn as a collective, as a human species. We teach each other what is better, and eventually they grow up out. They grow out of it, and the kid does, and nobody um, thought any, thought the worst of it. Uh, instead, we seem to have forgotten that in, um, in our institutional penitentiary system in the states. In some countries they have not. In many countries they have not. Some countries are extreme. For example, you have a uh, very extremist uh, severity in China, but it's not all exactly like that. In some ways you can explain it differently. Obviously it is not because they have evolved too fast and, and, and administrator run there, it's more to do perhaps with uh, impotence uh, before strong government. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. But what I'm saying is some countries do set an example of never having forgotten that the higher wisdom is not forgetting that we can repair our, our misreasoning, self-hurting uh, self of our own species, um, chain of reactions, uh, chain of chain of uh, the dynamics happening in the brain. Some of the psychology and the mind of a person can heal. There is natural redemption. It does exist chemically, people, but we, we, you know, we need the people that are in university going back to understanding what we have stopped discovering in our own brain, in our own minds. We have uh, the more that we have tunnel vision, the more the more we will stop discovering the greatness of the human mind in all our potential. So being a, a totally uh, run society by and then by ideas that you have to believe this and values that everybody has to be um, pressured to going by by going by those uh, social and civil values has everybody. And this is another thing that happens that also contributes to our dumbing ourselves. When you socially are forced to, and I saw this in, 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 in this gay movement, whatever, um, when people are forced to, though they still feel something intuitive, something that they, they wait a second, uh, you know, that's all right. I mean, I'm not going to hang you. I'm not going to insult you. You can still stay working at my restaurant. But, you know, I, I'd rather my kid not... I'd rather you not teach my kid that you're... that, that being gay is fabulous. I, I, I want you to respect that I want to see my kid grow up as a guy that loves being a man and loves to love women. You don't mind, right, that I, that I am happy to see my boy grow up into a guy that loves women 
and knows how to be a guy with the girls and all that, right? And um, that person exists as a restaurant owner and says, you know, you're, still, you're my friend, you're my waiter, I don't care. But do you, you understand the difference? Do you understand that, that both things can, can exist while you express this sort of idea in society? I am totally the base, the always value that has always existed in humanity and very much as worth as you are, in other words. I have the same right to uh, not having liked my experience with homosexuality and I thought I did for a while but I want my kid to not definitely not, not I know what caused it I know what I was looking for I know the where I was finding validation and love and gratification and, and shelter and, and and peace truce from a stuff that was happening in my head that's you know every time I would go with guys I understood it so well and now I know I can be a good dad and and you know, uh, the first thing is my wife is somebody who has a certain level of understanding that there is a psychological, sociological, cultural root to homosexuality, and so I know that we can work as if it were ever to happen, right, Charles? <laughs> you know what I mean? This is my conversation with the waiter, uh, and um, oh Jesus, I lost. Uh, oh yeah, okay, and he says. Um, yes, yes, uh, Fred, no problem, I totally, I know where you're coming from, don't worry, and, you know, what I've seen is that when I was younger, a lot of gay guys, let's just say, actually also had this, they intuitively knew to not, and not promote their own attraction to guys, to, to especially more respect to the restaurant's son, so all these, and to then, you know, because it matters more because he's the boss, right? So all these um, sort of intuitive bits of wisdom exist in the human mind. Now, what I was getting at is when you have a society that more intensely establishes, for example, now um, Fred, the restaurant owner, is a bad guy because he no longer is understood in this subtlety and this articulation that he had with his first waiter now this other waiter uh, Charlie comes and he uh, is all about you know I can do what I want and if I want to bring my adopted child with my husband here I should be why should I not bring your your kid over to our house to play with with our kid and you know and let let them learn about homosexuality, you know, we, w w what's wrong with teaching your kid about homosexuality, right? He has a whole other, 30 years down the line, he has a whole different discourse. What happens is that when Fred kind of um, surrendered, uh, is that he won't have that kind of waiter friend anymore, because he doesn't respect what he is and his reality and his child um, but Fred is also faced with an increasing society that does that and this is just one example but when a, when our intuitive base of, 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 wis of that is naturally that has no teaching that is fundamentally wise because of collective nourishing and health of living together and as knowing what being a human being is in the world which is comes arises in um, in the species and the individual lives in a world where everybody's just like one of those weird scientific movies that uh, Twilight Zone where they're all somewhere else talking about a different world a different dimension different reasoning different uh, uh, conclusions that none of it makes sense what happens is that the um, the overall because they too also eventually but first the first ones they become kind of like spent surrendered broken dumber kind of dumber sort of like well what matters now we can't talk about this anymore so the subjects that we quash because we can't talk about them in our sincere heart anymore 
in societies carrying on with whatever their beliefs are, become start getting absorbed into our greater, our overall reasoning intelligence. And we start becoming not as interested in life, not as involved. And so this kind of describes, uh, for example, L.A. In many ways, you see people that are very quiet, you say traditional, they don't go with, they live in West Hollywood, but they don't subscribe to, you know, adopting, gay parents adopting kids, for example. So they stay quiet, they don't integrate. Well, the other society, the other part of society is making a whole lot of noise, right? And so you approach one of these quiet people, instead of them, uh, you bring you bring to them a conversation that they hadn't expected to hear in a long time, and they're just not as, they don't see any more the reason why, why that is important, or where this conversation could go in, in respect to other people, uh, our friends in common or anything it's it, it does like a bogging down effect and I say eventually the other ones that went out there thinking that uh, you know no man landed on the moon that NASA never went to the moon uh, that's another one that all of the flights to the moon were were staged eventually are out there <laughs> and um they're out there alone and they see that somehow they left everybody behind and um, they don't know why so in a sense it it, 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 it bogs down also the people that um, were carrying on with mis mis miseducation believing why you know this always brings another question why were those people so excited right now this could go on and on and on, but the important point is that we stop creating categories of people called racist, anti-Semitic, judging and condemning them. There is no Semitism in, in so far as uh, something to look out, people don't fall into anti-Semitism or anti-homosexuality or anti or racist or, you know, uh, a behavior that starts turning a morphing into a kind of being, you know, and we got to, you know, put laws against those people and protect ourselves from those people uh, or, or, the, or, you know, or, or stop that so that people don't become that way. That whole thing is just sick. It's ill. We have to stop it in its tracks and treat each other as human beings, as equal human beings that could have the capacity to do anything and to end up saying anything, and to end up believing anything, and to end up treating or acting against or towards somebody, any way, anything, any, in any way, anybody else can. There's no separation between people. There's no, you know, we have to, some people we got to look out for, the bad ones, not us. We're the ones that put the rules and call who is the anti-Semitic. You know, we are not racist, because, you know, that same guy that's standing at the United Nations saying, you know, we got to pass laws and rules against anti-Semitism is probably calling Arabs something when he goes back home. Absurd. And the absurdity comes from the fact that we are not separate. And to seek to create separations and segregation based on judgmental condemnations of people's behavior, calling them anti-Semitic, or calling them a, a, a racist or a homophobe, um, only separates us more, makes us dumber, um, and creates injustice, because it creates injustice. It makes some people have to be afraid of what they say, and other people not care, because they will say it, and it's okay for them. They just don't want other people to say it about them. All right. So, sorry it was so long, 15, 16, oh how is it that those guys do, they go like this, whoop.